Howdy everybody, it's Strongbow. Yet again, a long gap between videos. Uh, I got some new locks in, finally. Um, this one should be... Since I get it open... This is an Avis 7240. It's like I ordered the long shackle version. I don't. Camera's making some weird. The lens on this camera got some damage a while back, so the autofocus motor makes some weird noises. Um, don't remember ordering the long shackle version. That appears to be what I ordered. At any rate, it's a 7240. Never picked one before. I got uh, a couple of 5540s that were a joke. And then on two consecutive days, apparently forgetting that I'd already ordered one, I ordered two uh, Trimax locks from uh, Amazon. This is a Trimax TPL175S. And then the next day, along with a, another Amazon order, I ordered a TPL275L, which as far as I can tell, are pretty much identical. They both appear to be about 50 millimeter locks um, with what appear to be about the same core. Um, the difference being that one is a long shackle version, although one says it's 175 and the other is 275. And one is S and one is L. I'm guessing S and L are for short and long shackle. I don't know what the 1 versus 275 means. Um, the disturbing thing is, I don't know if I can get this on camera through here, but there's a number stamped on the key. And if that number is the bidding, oddly enough, two different locks ordered on two different days with two different model numbers have the exact same bidding. And looking at the keys, that appears to be the case. They're stamped 1252, which, if that's the case, means they're only four pin locks. And they appear to actually be five pins, so I don't think that's the bidding. I think that may be the key style, I'm hoping. There are three keys with that one, and three keys with that one. So, I haven't heard much about these Trimax, they appear to be cheap Chinese locks. Uh, lock it or lose it, Trimax, the world's toughest locks, right? Probably tough the way Master Lock is tough. Commercial grade, rekeyable. Okay, that I hadn't really realized. These are, in fact, removable cores. So I can gut these. That'll be interesting. I was not expecting that, actually. They actually kind of look like they're sort of an American 1100, 1200 style clone. Uh, I'm not going to actually say they are a clone because I haven't compared the keys and the keyway and all that stuff. But uh, visually they appear to be almost clones of that style. Uh, great for toolboxes, gang boxes, trailers, gates and fences, solid hardened steel. I don't actually see Made in China on here anywhere. So maybe they aren't Chinese. I thought they were. Trimax is a division of Wires. W-Y-E-R-S, Product Group Inc. Inglewood, Colorado. P.O. Box 4161, Inglewood, Colorado. Blah, blah, blah. Sierra Complete Line, www.trimaxlocks.com. Ah, here we go. Manufactured to exclusive specifications in China. So they are Chinese made, but they, they're probably not Chinese locks. They're just like everything else in, in this country, manufactured in China. This may actually be an American design, which still doesn't guarantee they're not an American knockoff. Anyway, uh, I think I'll start with the 7240. I don't know if these will make it to this video or if I'll make separate videos of them. I'm going to try working with the vise today. Speaking of American locks, this is one of those American 1100s that I have uh, yet to get an open on. I've got three that I can open and two more that I can't. 
Although one of them I haven't tried yet, and this is the one that I have tried that I can't open yet. So let's take a look at this uh, 7240. I don't know why they put this scotch tape, cellophane tape across the box, but... Huh, black. I don't remember specifying a color, but... Yeah, standard Davis, I assume standard. Oh, do you remove the core on a 7240? Appears maybe you can. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, looks just fine as I would expect. I can feel at least when it's locked. There's uh, quite a bit of spring tension on the core. When unlocked, there's nothing. It's sort of like those American locks. There is, in fact, a screw down the shackle hole, so it appears that plate comes out. And at least you can remove the core. I don't know if you can gut it. Guess we'll find out. Here's the key and the bidding. It's uh, one, two, three. Is that only four pins? One, two, three, four, five. It almost looks like there might be six pins, except the. Number one and two, I don't know how well this is focusing. Like I said, that autofocus has been acting up a little bit lately. But it looks like one and two are really shallow cuts, almost zero cuts. Three is a very pretty shallow cut, four is a bit deeper, five is really shallow, and then six is deep. Uh, I have never gotten an open on a six pin lock before. Of course, the only six pins I've owned are the the American uh, 1100s that I can open that were only pinned to five, and I experimented with dropping a sixth pin in it and wasn't able to open it, but then it had trouble opening with the key. So this will be a, a little bit new. You know, I'll give it a try. Locked up. Put it in the vise. So uh, I get the camera adjusted here. Uh, now I don't believe this one is actually good for a belt for me on uh, the lock picking subreddit because if I recall correctly this is about a uh, a blue belt lock. I'm already a blue belt because of the 1100s. Let's start with uh, sparrows. Don't know how well this will work. Now, I like to, just because it works better for me, I like to start at the back of the lock and work my way forward. You know, most lock pickers videos I see, they always start at number one and work their way back. I don't know why, I just can't do that. I think it just feels like, because of the, the way the, the pick curves, I'm kind of working against the, the curve of the pick. That actually doesn't feel like it's giving me enough room in the keyway. And I'm also not really used to working in the vise, I normally pick in hand. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, yeah, this, this isn't working for me. I might give that a try later, but. Let's see, yeah, I gotta adjust the camera if I'm gonna do that. Try and keep it in frame. Come on, focus. Oh wow, this is a uh, this keyway is gonna be a challenge. Yeah, I need a thinner. Uh, Let me 
tension tool. Grab the slim one out of uh, my law lock tools kit. Don't know if that's ultimately going to make any difference. I may have to go to a top of keyway, which will be interesting. Yep, yeah, that's can't work with that either. Okay. Go with, uh, let's see. Try this one. One of the Mad Bob's curves, curved uh, tension tools, which I can't fit in there. This is the slimmest one I've got. It is unfortunately too wide to fit in that uh, in that slot. I might be able to kind of go middle of keyway, but I don't know how well that'll work. See, I, I don't think this is going to work too well, but that's about as far up in the keyway I can get it. But it feels like I've got more room than I do at the bottom of the keyway, so let's see how this goes. Okay, I can at least feel pins now. That's for sure. I don't know what kind of security pins these 7240s have in them. I can already tell you this is trickier than the 5540s I've dealt with. Because those almost threw up a surrender flag as soon as I stuck a pick in them. Man, I can really feel hear that thing seeking on the autofocus. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the microphone. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a tricky pick. It might be the best pick. I know a lot of folks find this a little bit odd that I work with this one, but I've had some of my best luck with this pick. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try with this uh, tension tool as well. A little bit, uh, gives a little bit more room, I think. And I have a lot of luck with this pick. I know a lot of people, you know, the reach pick is a very specialty application pick, but I don't know, for some reason it's my go-to. Give a little bit on that one. Nope, still not enough room in the keyway. Back to this guy and the. This is just weird how the, the keyway is. I can't can't fit anything but a top of keyway in the middle. Ah, that one will fit at the top. There we go. 
Now I've got a bit more room. I can reach around that wording now. Am I in focus? Come on, camera focus. All right, I'm going to break the video right here and change out the lens. This one seems to be having autofocus problems. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I switched out the lens on the camera. The other one was a uh, 35 to 80 lens. This one's a, uh, what's this one again? Is a 15, 18 to 18 to 55 lens. It's also a much newer lens and the servo motors on the autofocus are not damaged so it's nice and quiet and it appears to be autofocusing a little bit better. Come on. Okay. And it says I've got about half my battery left. Alright, let's see if I can get anywhere with this. At least feeling the pins now. Really feeling any feedback though. Be interesting to see what this thing's got inside it. Just, I can feel the pins, but I'm not really feeling anything that... I'm not really feeling any feedback from them. Just see what I get from raking. This is I'm using an Andrew Law tensioner. Let's try some uh, Law tools. Still missing one of these rakes. Not sure what I did with it. Alright, let's start with a snake rake. Doesn't feel like it's doing much. Alright, uh, City rake. I'm 
Nothing yet. Bogota. The, the four peak, I don't know if this is the cycloid or the sinusoidal. I think it's the cycloid. So we'll go to the five peaks. Again, I'm not sure if this is the cycloid or the sinusoidal. I have both of the fives. I'm missing the other four peak rake. Absolutely nothing out of this thing. A lovely rainy Saturday out there. Good day to be inside and picking locks. Of course, any day is a good day to be inside picking locks, but today I've got an excuse for not going outside. Alright, no good on any of the rakes. Click. That was one of those high set number one or number two. Obviously, um, that's a fail for now. I'll keep working at it. Bye for now. <laughs>